What is going on, everybody? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMPIA and part 147 instructor, back with another video. This time, I'm gonna be talking about, with the start of the new year being 2024, three ways for you to become a certificated AMP aircraft mechanic. If that interests you, stick around. The first way that you can become an AMP mechanic, and probably the easiest, to be honest, is to go through an approved part 147 school. It's also going to be the fastest route. Now, I'm talking about going as a full-time student and committing to the program from start to finish, not taking part-time classes, not taking night classes, going through the program. There are some programs that are as short as 12 months. There are some programs that are longer, like the one that I teach at because we are a community college that is 18 to 19 months. So it just depends on where you go. Now, the thing to understand about going to a 147 school, and again, I've spoken to, about this before, but maybe this is your first video, is that you're going to have to commit to a pretty rigorous 7.30 to four o'clock schedule every single day, Monday through Friday, from the time you start until the time you finish. So that's 18 months having pretty much your whole day taken up and having to work a night job, something on the weekends, whatever it may be, and it can be very, very difficult. Also, I've said this in other videos, 147 schools are not all built the same. Some schools are, we won't call them for profit, but they are for profit. They say they're not, but at the end of the day, they have to pay their instructors. It's a private institution and they can cost very, very, very expensive price tags. We're talking 30, 45, $50,000 to go through the program to get an AMP certificate. If you go to a community college like where I teach and you are in district, that is very important, in district, then you can get away with closer to the 10 to 15 range. After you get Pell Grants and assistance, it can be as low as a fat goose egg and you don't even end up having to take a student loan. It just depends on where you're at. Second way to get an A&P is going to be through practical experience. So this is actually gonna be the second and third way, but I'll discuss the second way of just practical experience first. The easiest way to do that is to go work for a shop. You can go work for Boeing, you can go work for an engine overhaul facility, you can go work at a general aviation maintenance facility. The lure of this is that you will be getting paid while you go through three years of work documenting all of the things you do, documenting what's happening, so on and so forth. And after three years, you can apply to the local FISDO, your Flight Standards District office, to test based on practical experience. You will meet with an airworthiness inspector. He will ask you to bring a whole bunch of records of what you've been doing, maybe logbooks, maybe employment history, whatever it may be, and then he will sign you off the test. Now, here is the important thing to understand with that. If you've been working at a engine overhaul facility like Standard Aero, he might not give you full credit to get your A because you didn't do any airframe work. You were strictly working instru in instruments. You were strictly working engines. Vice versa, if you're in a sheet metal shop or you're a structures mechanic somewhere like Boeing, you might not be getting a sign off to get your power plant certificate because all you've been doing is airframe. However, once you get an A, or a P, you can go to a 147 school at night and just take the airframe portion or the power plant portion of the program to get a certificate for that completion to test for the other certificate that you are missing. And a lot of people don't actually realize that you can mix them. We have a lot of retired military guys do that. They'll get out and they'll have just an A or they'll get out and they'll have just a P and then they'll come to us and we give them credit for their general and their P and we just give them the airframe portion. They'll get a certificate of completion from airframe and then they can test to get their A as well as their P. The third way is still practical experience, but with a little bit of a different caveat. With demand and shortages being as bad as they are, yes, people are still retiring in large numbers and yes, there is not enough new mechanics to replace them. A lot of companies like the airlines and you know repair stations and wherever else are offering apprenticeship programs. They hire you knowing that you are not an a &P, hoping to take you through an apprenticeship program where you're, again, getting paid. And at the end of that apprenticeship program, which will include training as well as being an apprentice, you are then signed off to test for your airframe and power plant certificate. And you earned that all while working. You joined me from the porch. I realized while I was editing this that I forgot a fourth option which is you can, it's very expensive, but you can apply for a repairman certificate and build an experimental aircraft from scratch, logging all of the work you do 
and then apply at the FISDO based on practical experience that way. What are the pros and cons of all of these different options though? Since, you know, the video is still kind of short, I figured I might address it. Well, with a part 147 school, it's going to be the fastest, most direct route to finishing your AMP certificate, assuming you're coming into this with no prior aviation um, experience. But the drawback is it's going to be very expensive and it's going to take a lot of your time. Pros and cons of doing an apprenticeship or a practical experience route for your AMP. The pros, you're going to be making money. Cons, it's going to take a lot longer and you're not going to be making near as much money as you would if you had a full airframe and power plant certificate. But I realize with wives, with kids, with family, with you know societal norms and what society expects of all of our responsibilities, not one way of doing it works for everyone. So I would advise you to heavily weigh all the options before you really nail down and commit to I'm going to go this route. Now I will add, um, we do offer a night program as do a lot of 147 schools for the students who work during the day. So they work at Boeing all day, they work at Standard Aero all day, whatever it may be, and then they come to school with us at night. The problem is with night classes, you're only taking one class a day instead of two classes a day. So instead of taking 18 months, it actually will take you three years to complete the program. So something to keep in mind if you wanna take night classes. As always, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I have done an awful job of keeping up with my emails, so I do apologize for that. I'm trying to do better about it, but I am balancing uh, my main job, my side business, and this. So shoot me an email. I'll do my best to answer your question. Like I said, I never discuss the school that I work at directly because I'm not an authorized representative of the school that I work at. Uh, but if you're curious, I am located in San Antonio, and I am not at Hallmark University. As always, there's nothing against Hallmark University. I'm just not teaching there. And that should narrow it down pretty much the rest of the way for you to know where I am at. Uh, as always, leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, join the Discord, follow me on Instagram. Maybe one day I'll get crazy and I'll create a Facebook. I don't know. Go build something and be easy.